Hi, my name is Satan, I'm the devil, and I'm really into diminished seventh arpeggios. By going up and down them and harmonizing them in various ways, you can easily create cacophonies of twisted madness. You know, music that reminds me of home. In fact, the music you're hearing right now is composed of nothing but diminished seventh arpeggios. And as you can hear, diminished can sound pretty demonic. Ha ha! So in order to teach you how to play the music of my people, I've temporarily possessed a suburban guitar teacher named Jake Lizio. He's going to show you how to build these arpeggios, how to play them, and demonstrate the effects of harmonizing them in different ways. Take it away, Jake! Okay, so we're going to start things off with the music theory first, how to build these things, how to play them. Then we'll harmonize with them in different ways. You can hear what that sounds like. And at the very end, we'll have a little bit more fun by taking that arpeggio passage and adding some drums and bass and trying to turn it into something actually musical. Okay, so the music theory here first. What is a diminished seventh arpeggio? That's easy to answer if you know what a minor third is. A minor third is just a distance of three half steps. You can think of that as three frets on your guitar. You can think of it as three keys on your piano, just three little notes, all right? And if you keep stacking up minor thirds, if you keep stacking up that distance of three frets and three frets and three frets and three frets, you'll end up with all the notes of a diminished seventh arpeggio. So, for example, let's start on F, okay? My first fret on the low string, this note's F. If I travel three frets over, it takes me to this note, that's an A flat. If I travel another three frets, it takes me to this note, that's a B. And if I travel another three frets, it takes me to D. So those four notes right there, F, A flat, B, and D, those are the four notes of a diminished seventh arpeggio. If I go another three frets, if I go another minor third, it just takes, takes me back to another F. So after four notes, you just start repeating yourself. So there's really only four notes in this, in this chord or in this arpeggio. Now this is a silly way to play it. You don't want to be playing arpeggios up and down on your guitar like this. So we'll do it like this instead. And this is the first shape I want you to practice to be able to play these arpeggios. It's a giant shape. Starting on my first fret, I'll play my minor third with my pinky. And then my first finger just scoots up one string and over one fret. And I get to do the exact same thing. A little minor third right there. Chain strings, move up one fret. Use your pinky for the minor third. Chain strings, one fret. Use your pinky. Now to get the next string, I have to move up two frets. And then I can resume the pattern of using my pinky and moving up one fret and using my pinky. Okay? So the whole thing looks like this. It's actually a really simple shape to internalize because it's so symmetrical and so easy to see. It's just really hard to play, especially down on these lower registers. You're moving a lot, a lot of position shifting. So I think of it more as a, uh, I, I like that, that shape as a reference. It helps me figure out where I'm at and it's nice to see those minor thirds just stacked after it. But when I'm actually playing these arpeggios, I'm very rarely going up and down the entire thing. Normally what I do is use little bits of the arpeggio. So I wanna show you this shape instead. Uh, I'll start it, I'll start it on F again, just a different F. So this note right here on the third string is my 10th fret, that's an F. And what I wanna do is I wanna play my minor third. The nice thing about diminished sevenths is you always know where the next note's gonna be. It's always gonna be three frets away, okay? So here's my first note F, here's my minor third, and then I'm gonna use my ring finger to play 12. I'll use my first finger to play 10, and I'll use my pinky to finish off that little shape. So I've got this little baby diminished shape, just three little strings, but very easy to play, very easy to sweep through and get little different ideas going with that, okay? There's another shape just like that that starts on just a few strings lower, and I want you to know that one as well, because it's easy to play, and it gets the point across. So uh, the shape would look like this. We'll start on uh, F right here. This will be the 15th fret on the fourth string, and I'll do my minor third with my pinky, and then I'll put on my middle finger, and then my first finger, and then my pinky, and I can just go up and down that little shape. All right. So going up and down is a good thing. Going just down or going up is another thing. But really what this video is about is the joy of taking these ideas, stringing them together, and then just harmonizing with them. It's really silly. I'm not going to lie. I mean, this isn't the most practical kind of music, but I still get such a kick out of of doing this and like hearing what it sounds like. You know, music can really be interesting, especially when you experiment and do the stuff you're not supposed to do. And it should go without saying, you're, you're really not supposed to write songs that are entirely based on diminished arpeggios. But if you just do it for a little bit, you might be surprised at all the cool stuff that happens. So here's the cool thing. If I write something using one of these shapes, okay? So like the simplest thing I could write is just going up and down. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put my pinky on A and I'm gonna go down and up the arpeggio three times. 
Then I'll do that exact same thing, just three frets higher. And you'll see this video clip playing over it, and you'll hear this video clip playing over it. So you'll hear what it sounds like when I take this shape and harmonize it with this shape. And then I'll do it again, three frets higher, and I'll do it again, three frets higher. So you should hear what this whole thing sounds like when we harmonize it all four different ways. So I'm gonna turn on my metronome. We'll try this out for the first time. One E and a two E and a three E and a four. Now three frets higher, and I'll play the clip in the background. One, two, three, four. Now, you're starting to hear what that harmony sounds like when you harmonize in pure minor thirds. Now, let's add in the next one. This will be harmonizing, adding in a tritone. One, two, three, four. And then the last one. One, two, three, four. All right. So that is what all four harmonies would sound like if you take that simple idea and just move it up three frets higher and do the same thing and harmonize that three frets higher and harmonize that three frets higher. It's really silly stuff and it sounds kind of chaotic, but you don't have to harmonize it in these minor thirds like that. You can really experiment. I want you to hear what that exact same thing sounds like uh, with major seconds. I think this is even more chaotic. You get a whole tone infusion into this diminished chaos. Take a listen. <laughs> If you try something like a major third, it actually brightens up this chaos a little bit. And I think maybe the most practical application would be something like a perfect fourth. If you do it with a perfect fourth, you can get something that's kind of progressive and open, but still chaotic. You're never going to escape the chaos of just these diminished seventh arpeggios. So I find this stuff really entertaining. I, I'm not going to speak on how practical it is. There are moments um, where you do want this briny, bubbling, uh, really demonic sound. And I think diminished seventh is very, very good for that. Uh, also, octatonic scales, I think, are really good for something like that. Um, but this is more fun because it's so easy to harmonize with it. And if you've got another guitar player with you doing those same patterns, I mean, once you learn it in one spot, you just move it up three frets and do it again, and boom, there's your harmony. So it's very easy to harmonize with. Now, during that ridiculous intro for this video, I have this arpeggio passage going on in the background, I let my, my fingers write it. Instead of like having an intent, I just kind of said, okay, what patterns are comfortable to play? Um, what works out? Where can I move to easily? What will I not have to practice that much? And then afterwards, I kind of deduce, oh, okay, we'll, we'll treat this like a measure of 7-8. We'll treat this like a measure of 5-8. What I tried to do is I tried to reinforce some of these weird time signatures by adding in a drum beat that matches up with a bass line. And that bass line is very simple. It's literally taking any note from the arpeggio and just treating it like the root. Because the weird thing about diminished seventh arpeggios is since they're symmetrical like that, any one of the notes could have been the root. So for example, when I was playing this F diminished arpeggio at the beginning, I mean, yeah, it's F diminished because I started on F, but it could have also been an A flat diminished arpeggio. There's no differentiation between the notes. There's no difference between the notes of G flat diminished seventh and F diminished seventh. The only difference is what note that I start on. So by having access to any one of those notes being the root, it gave me a lot of freedom as a bass player to make an easy bass line. Really, my goal going into this was, this is so silly and so crazy. Let's just try and make it simple on the other elements. So have a bass line that just kind of helps reinforce the chords instead of going as crazy as everything else. Also during those odd time signature sections, you can see I did more of that rhythmic pulsing. I think it's very helpful to not play a measure of 716 as seven actual 16th notes, but maybe something like an eighth note, an eighth note, and a dotted eighth note. That'll give you three little pulses that add up to 716, and I think that's a lot more interesting than just seven straight 16th notes like what was happening in my lead. So how practical is something like this? That all depends on the kind of music you're into and the kind of music you want to write. If you're big into writing country songs, this isn't going to help you that much, but I still think it's fun to play around with and experiment with. If you're into progressive rock or like, you know, some sorts of metal, then you could probably get a lot of mileage out of these ideas, especially if you put them down onto the lower register, and then that harmonizing technique, playing around with the different ways to harmonize it, you're going to have an infinite variety of ways to sound confusing, chaotic, and disturbing. Um, you will find examples of this in like a lot of orchestral pieces and a lot of film score. You'll hear these diminished clouds sometimes create little bits of anxiety. And uh, more importantly, I hear them in little tiny bits, um, maybe just a measure of diminished, you know, not an entire piece in diminished, but a lot of instrumental progressive rock songs, you know, Dream Theater and Symphony X, you'll hear these diminished arpeggios going up and down in harmony. And I just love the way that sounds. 
There is a ton to talk about when it comes to diminished seventh arpeggios. This is just one little tiny way to view them, playing them and just harmonizing them and sounding evil with them. But it's a fun thing to do with them, and if you're not too tight on your music theory, maybe this can get you involved in starting to learn some of the theory and at least having fun and making some chaotic stuff with this. So if you like this video and if you want to see more videos like this, please consider supporting my Patreon page. There's a link in the description. And if you can't do that, just like, subscribe, comment, favorite, share. All that stuff helps me out. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon.